Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big warm welcome to the lovely and talented Dr. Robert Heineman. I, uh, this is where you come into what's called dead airspace, I think. <laughs> Alfred University political science professor emeritus, Dr. Heidemann, thank you for joining us. Well, quite all right, Brian. Well, uh, Congressman Tom Reed there uh, sent out a, a statement on Wednesday talking about the importance of deregulation and how deregulation is uh, leading to job growth in the USA. Your thoughts on that, uh, Dr. Heidemann? Well, I think we've made this point again and again um, that uh, not only has the Trump administration uh, affected taxes and uh, changed the tax structure, but something as as uh, equivalent, really, maybe saving even more money is this whole uh, effort to uh, deregulate uh, huge areas. Um, of the uh, of the economy, and I guess more than the economy, even uh, social activity. So that uh, the idea is, of course, that uh, these regulations tend to just proliferate, and the result is that they're pretty onerous on uh, the uh, businesses and people generally, but small business in particular. But large businesses have to hire people to deal with this, and colleges and universities have to hire people, especially who just handle questions about affirmative action and uh, loans and all this sort of thing. So the cost is really uh, pretty uh, large uh, throughout the economy. And I think one of the reasons the economy is really burgeoning is that uh, businesses are beginning to feel that some of this uh, kind of regulation is uh, beginning to be removed and giving them more freedom. Now, the point is, in terms of these regulations, uh, not only are they uh, a burden on uh, business, but, of course, they reflect the fact that agencies have to hire more people so that these regulations don't just enforce themselves uh, the more regulations you have, the more uh, staff you need, and uh, then you get a, you get into situations where you've got court cases and such. So then, in terms of cutting back on the federal uh, employment, uh, cutting back on regulations is another way of cutting back the need for uh, federal personnel. And the Trump administration has made huge uh, movement in this area. I was just looking at. Uh, Wall Street Journal, I think it was a Wall Street Journal article from earlier in this week where uh, they count the number of pages in the, it was the regulations of pages, uh, dropped from something like uh, close to 100,000 down to uh, somewhere in the 60,000 range under Trump. I mean, you can just see the Obama administration goes way, way up to the edge of the chart, and now under Trump it drops uh, precipitously down. Question there, Dr. Heidemann. Why do you think Obama was big on the idea of regulation? Well, that's his orientation, that government uh, should be able to tell the rest of us uh, what and how to do things. And so his comments about the, what the people in, where was it, in the Northwest or whatever, who were into uh, uh, guns and... Uh, and their the Bibles. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, they're different. They're really not up to the speed that uh, the people inside the Beltway are. And I thought Trump's speech in Fargo really hit that very well, where he said, you know, you guys are as smart as uh, these uh, pundits in New York City and inside the Beltway. In fact, he says, you're a lot smarter. You're doing a lot more work. You're producing a lot more. You, in fact, are contributing to the American economy. So, uh, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. So uh, that, uh, I think that, appeals to the base. Now, we've got to say, here and there you run into regulations and, and uh, changes that are going to cause some problems, and the uh, Trump administration is going to have to be kind of careful how far they go. For example, in the area of health care, 
they had regulations uh, and encouragement to uh, encourage private insurance companies to sort of stabilize the costs of health care insurance. So some of the companies who are getting uh, healthy, young um, clients and patients obviously make money. Some of the other uh, insurance companies who are uh, picking up uh, people who are older and uh, need more uh, medical care, they tend to go into the go into deficit. So the regulation basically said you can balance this out. Uh, the the uh, wealthy uh, and uh, prosperous uh, health insurance companies can share um, with uh, the less prosperous so that, you can, and I don't know what kind of formula they came up with, but the whole idea was to kind of equalize the burden across the insurance industry, uh, and I think to encourage private insurance companies to survive. Um, but uh, apparently the uh, Trump administration is backing off on that, and that's going to be expensive. Plus, people are going to be lost. Some people are going to be left without any health insurance. So uh, you got to be kind of careful here uh, when you uh, start um, pushing these things back because, as Reed says, uh, a lot of uh, we need some regulations. There's no question about that. But the problem with uh, uh, these agencies is they are so focused on the uh, justification and the uh, worth of their mission that they just keep adding and adding and adding. And that comes from the perspective, I think, that they know much better than the rest of us what's good for us. And uh, I think that's where we differ with the Obama people and uh, the liberal Democrats pretty fundamentally. In your answer, Dr. Bobby, you touched on uh, Obamacare repeal and reform. Uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand made a point this week of saying that uh, insurance providers are charging less for uh, medical insurance since Obamacare was passed. Your thoughts on that statement from Senator Gillibrand? Uh, I doubt that that's true. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, uh, the effort to equalize uh, the uh, burdens that these insurance companies are carrying um, should keep uh, uh, the cost down. And it may be that with uh, the government as a backup in some of these insurance uh, areas, uh, of course, uh, companies may be reluctant to take the heavy uh, burdens of some of the people with heavy insurance costs. But on the other hand, now... Uh, the feds have repealed, and I think Congress has repealed the uh, mandate that you have to pay a penalty if you don't have health insurance. So some people simply won't get health insurance, especially young people who think they're never going to get sick, and et cetera. So that's, uh, that could be leading to uh, lower costs for the private insurance companies, too. Uh, but that's going to change. So... All right, Dr. Bob, if we could talk a little bit about uh, Trump in Belgium and uh, his NATO visit. Yes, yes. Well, I think uh, obviously he's stirring things up, which he, he does have a bit of a tendency to do. Um, but uh, uh, clearly uh, his view is that these NATO, uh, these European countries have been sort of uh, riding on the back of the United States for far too many years and that they should pick up uh, more of the costs. Now, you got to understand, though, at the same time, as Macron has said, he never anywhere said that uh, the United States was going to withdraw from NATO. Uh, and at the same time, he signed a uh, basic NATO accord. Uh, he has, uh, we have uh, poured uh, federal tr uh, American troops into Poland and into the Baltic countries. Uh, where we're telling the, Ru the Russians, as you know, have concentrated a lot of military forces around the Baltic countries, because I think Putin thinks he's got the, he's got the military, he's got the geography, and uh, he can be pretty intimidating there. He doesn't have to go with nuclear threats or anything of that sort, um, and maybe uh, you know just move in through there, uh, because the Russians do have a corridor from there to uh, I think it's Königsberg. I don't know what they call it now. 
uh, the port on the Baltic. Uh, but we're telling them pretty directly, and, of course, there are other NATO troops there. But we're certainly supporting them on that. So the United States at the same time is clearly uh, providing support for a number of uh, NATO efforts. But I think, uh, you know, Trump is criticizing the plush headquarters they have there. And he's right. I mean, you get these uh, bureaucracies in place like NATO, and they're not interested in going away. They want to stay there forever. And there's no question that NATO is probably the most successful military alliance uh, in history. I mean, they've been very effective and have done a lot of good things. But the time uh, for that uh, and the threats uh, that they're dealing with, I think, have changed dramatically. And uh, um, Trump's view is they can afford uh, to pump things up a little bit. And I think uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting there is his attack on, uh, what is it, the uh, Nord... Uh, I want to say Strom, Nordstrom, the uh, two, the uh, pipeline that uh, Germany and the Russians are building for uh, energy gas from Russia into Germany, which will go through the Baltic and come into Germany, which will give the Russians you know, a real outlet uh, for their natural gas and help them with their economy. And uh, Trump is very critical of that as are quite a number of NATO allies, in fact. And uh, the problem is not only that the United States would just soon provide more uh, natural gas to Germany, which we could, uh, but it does give the uh, Russians kind of a stranglehold or a threat over the Germans. And they've done this before, namely raising the cost of um, energy if you become halfway dependent on They did that with the Ukraine on a number of occasions. Uh, but they've kind of backed off on that lately because I think they can see that's uh, really not well received, as you can imagine. But the people that are really worried about that are the Poles. Uh, the Poles are not too happy about being caught before, between the Russians and the Germans because they've been in that position before. And uh, for Germany to go ahead and set up this uh, pipeline around the poles uh, and uh, work more closely with the Russians, I think, makes uh, the poles a little nervous, and I think justifiably so, because um, uh, Putin isn't uh, reluctant to push into areas he thinks are vulnerable. So to say that uh, Trump is uh, threatening the demise of NATO, I think, is uh, quite a stretch, but he certainly given his opinion, and uh, I think uh, some of the NATO countries will begin to contribute somewhat more uh, to their defense budgets, so we can contribute less. Dr. Bob, uh, when you hear the liberal commentators and uh, talking heads come on and talk about the end of NATO and it's the end of the world, and it, does it seem like uh, the sky is falling a little bit too much these days? Well, I think Trump is right that... Uh, uh, we've been uh, supporting these countries uh, way beyond what we need to. And, what, uh, and they can do some of these things on their own. And uh, the Obama administration took this idea, well, we can sit down and we can be nice to them, and then they'll be nice to us. Well, sure they'll be nice to us. They're milking us for huge amounts of money. Uh, 